If only they were big enough to take their health into their own hands. But sometimes danger is where you least expect it. That's why they have you to protect them. Lead poisoning is one of the most serious public health issues for children living in pre-1978 housing, and many are never tested. Exposure to lead can damage a young child's brain. Take their health into your hands. Learn the risks. Get kids tested. Call 216-263-5323 to find out if your child is at risk for lead poisoning. For those of you who don't know me and those that are so far in the back they can't even see me, uh, I am Greg Clifford, the Chief Magistrate, and I'd like to welcome you here to our court-wide training, Beyond the Language Barrier, the Bilingual Courtroom, and Equal Access to Justice. We'd like to start our program off with a few opening remarks from our Deputy Court Administrator, Franzetta Turner. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. On behalf of court administration, I would like to thank you for joining us today. This is always an excellent opportunity to meet with our colleagues that we don't get to see every day and talk about issues that our court faces while sharing our experiences and our continued desire for improvement in business processes, <laughs> protocol, and especially our communication with one another between departments. At this time, I'm going to ask that you please silence your phones, uh, put them in the silent mode instead of vibrate if you can. We'll be taking a 15-minute break sometime during this afternoon, so please save your personal phone calls for that time. Or better yet, why don't you use that time to talk to a coworker that you would not typically see on a daily basis? We remind you to be courteous to your colleagues and presenters by limiting your texts texting during the program, as well as comments that you may make during the session. Feel free to use the bathroom as needed. They're in the hallways there. Um, but remember, this is a smoke-free environment. We have snacks, if you, as you've seen, and maybe, maybe there'll be some left for the break. But um, just be mindful that some of them may contain peanuts or other ingredients that may be allergic. So please be cautious if you have any allergies or food reactions. Near the end of the program, you will be given Lysol wipes so that we can keep the tables clean um, because we are responsible for keeping this room in the condition that we found it, which was clean, nothing on the floor, uh, and chairs pushed in. Additionally, we have been um, having all employees sign in with their timekeepers in the hallway. So if you're coming in after the uh, sign-in sheets have been removed or you know someone who's coming in a little later, please let them uh, be responsible for checking in with their timekeepers so that they get credit for the day. Also, I'd like to thank the judges uh, of Cleveland Municipal Court for giving us this opportunity to come outside of the building, taking our operations, and for scheduling as few dockets as possible this afternoon. It isn't every day that we get to gather together like this, so let's take every moment to enjoy it and get the most out of it. Lastly, please be advised that this program is being recorded and will be aired on TV20. Pictures are also going to be uh, taken during the day, so please enjoy yourself. Sit back. They have worked very hard to put this uh, event together, so enjoy yourselves. Thank you, Franzetta. And now I'd like to invite up Catherine Pena Arietta, our Interpretation and Translated Services Unit Coordinator. All right. So let's take this moment to take your agenda out. Let's get familiar with what is to expect for this afternoon. We have a lot prepared for you. Uh, so sometimes it may feel like we're moving fast. Uh, there might not be time for a lot of questions, but we do care about your feedback. Uh, so please do this. In order to recycle paper, I purposely didn't put a, another sheet for your notes, but use the back of your sheet. Take some notes, and please send me an email with anything that you thought was interesting, something that was not clear, uh, a suggestion that you have for the future. Make sure you do do that. 
Um, now let's look. Uh, we do have everything time, but as we know, we have speeches coming up. And so it depends on how the timing will go. So it's possible that you won't take your break exactly at 2.25, but we will make every effort to do so. Uh, we will be showing you videos. Please forgive us if something is wrong with the technology. We tested everything a million times, but you know when it's showtime, variables could happen. Um, you'll hear from Mayor Jackson, you'll hear from uh, Council President, you'll hear from our judge, you will hear from various interpreters that have volunteered their time. So please, let's take a moment to applaud them for volunteering their entire day and weekend to prepare for this. This entire event has been full of volunteer work. We have volunteers from City Hall, from City Council, from within our court uh, to make this possible and reasonable because we know that we're dealing with tax payments, uh, tax dollars. Um, after the break, we will get to a presentation and we'd like to thank all the effort that Ali al Mashni has put from the housing division. She will present about the Arabic culture and how it affects our everyday work. The reason why we're doing all this, here are two, uh, various terms that you'll hear throughout the day. You will hear LAP, that refers to language access plan that we are responsible for having as a court. This is a mandate from the Supreme Court and from the DOJ. So the reason why we're all here is because a huge portion of it is training. This particular training will deal with culture and how it affects our court and your everyday operations. But as you see, you will get updates from the subtraining committee in future trainings. Uh, the idea for the plan is that it would normally take three years. We're trying to do this in half the time. Uh, so this is why we need your cooperation. Part of the plan is translation. We actually have 10 benchmarks that we have to meet as a court. And we're hoping that by the end of the year, Judge Adrian can sign it and that this can be published on our website and sent over to the Supreme Court. Uh, we will wrap up with ADA accommodations because one big thing is for us to be in full compliance with ADA. So we will be showing you a video from the Supreme Court and a demonstration on additional accommodations that we will have for here. Um, then we will have the closing remarks by Russell Brown, and if he's not available, then it might be from Mike Negre. Notice that I put the pot time 4 to 4.15. That is an aggressive time. Please plan on being here until 4.30, but we will make every effort to wrap things up nicely. And the way we can do this is if you take your break, and then you're back right on time. Enjoy. And now I'd like to present to you someone who needs no introduction, someone whose name is on every one of our paychecks, the mayor of the city of Cleveland, Frank G. Jackson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And how are you today? Good. Good. You know, I want to uh, welcome everyone to this uh, beyond uh, language barrier, it, simply because it is so important. You know, we, uh, we're public servants, we're government, and government's job is to provide public service. We're not a for-profit organization, which means we don't do what we do to make money. We do what we do in order to provide a service to people. And in order to provide that service and provide that service at a high level, we have to allow access to that service and we have to eliminate the barriers to that access and in this case, eliminating the barrier of language. I know over on, in, uh, on our side, uh, in the administrative side, in, in uh, council president who is really the person in city hall who has been promoting this at a high level will talk to you about it in detail, but we've done a lot of things on our side that helps us when we come in contact with people uh, as we're providing service to them and how do we provide that service and do it in a way that we are serving them rather than having it be impunitive to them. We don't want people uh, looking at government as government coming down on them. We want people to look at government as, uh, as something where government is trying to assist them. Uh, it could be in a building and housing. It could be in um, public safety. Uh, even license and assessment, all those kinds of things are, are, where, uh, uh, where people get uh, birth certificates, all these kinds of, of uh, direct interaction with the public. And, uh, and especially when it comes to the court, uh, it is so important 
particularly if, if people who do not speak English and don't have it as a primary language may have a different opinion or view of the court system. And for us to be able to uh, make that experience for them a friendly and, and fair uh, experience goes a long way in people being able to relax and be able to be uh, what we would want for ourselves in the city of Cleveland, well, throughout the country, what we would want for ourselves. So again, I, I thank you for inviting me here in great initiative and, and it's an essential one, even though, as it was mentioned, it is part of uh, the DOJ and the Supreme Court, uh, I believe is something that we were moving towards anyway, but uh, it's always nice to have somebody tell you, well, you put a time limit on it so you can get it done now. And so, uh, again, thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Jackson. And now I'd like to invite forward the president of Cleveland City Council, Kevin Kelly. I haven't seen him. Where is he? Not Kevin's not here? He's on his way. He's on his way. Well, then we'll just keep on moving forward. I'll now present to uh, you our administrative and presiding judge, someone who's been with the Cleveland Municipal Court for, what, over 35 years, uh, who uh, has been our leader to uh, help us to move in a positive direction so that we can make sure that we fulfill all of our responsibilities to the public, the uh, Honorable Ronald B. Adrian. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So um, they say that if you speak three languages, you're trilingual. If you speak two languages, you're bilingual. If you only speak one language, you're American. <laughs> okay. And as funny as that is, it's really kind of sad when you stop and think about it, when you think about how many languages there are out there that the way that we've been acculturated and the way we've been raised, we only tend to think that the only language that's, that's the lingua franca of the world is English, and that if you know English, you really don't know, need to know anything else. And for a long period of time, especially after World War II, that was pretty much exactly the way things were, that everybody else had to learn English because the United States was the economic driver, and if you wanted to be able to get to the point where you were going to do business in the United States, you better learn English. Well, things have changed, and those uh, things are particularly evident when you start looking at how uh, people in other parts of the world are now coming up to challenge the United States and how some of our kids now are, are learning not only Japanese, which was rising fast for a while, but, but now Chinese as uh, the language that in the future may be the lingua franca of uh, the world, the, the money language, if you will, of the world. So it's important that uh, we recognize that we have an obligation to become facile with the languages of the world in order to make sure that we're able to operate in different uh, milieus as they come to our court. Um, I, I want to, before I just say a couple other things, and then I'm going to sit down really quickly, because uh, as they say, you know, the best public speakers know that they're, they're charged with uh, being brilliant, being brief, and being seated. <laughs> and so I want to stick to that. But this is the last time that I get to actually address the Cleveland Municipal Court writ large. That is to say all three divisions in one location. And so that being the case, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for working with me over the course of the last 35 uh, to almost 36 years. Uh, thank you for helping me. Uh, when I didn't know anything when I first got here, and some people would probably say, still don't know nothing. <laughs> okay. 
and especially those of you who have helped me to try to move the court in uh, along a, a vision that I've had for where it should be as opposed to where it is over the course of the last eight and a half plus years. I want to say thank you to all of you uh, for allowing me to do that. Um, the, the session that we're having today is the last of my court-wide meetings. And of course, they've been a key note of what I've tried to do during the time I've been here is to periodically bring us all together, all three divisions, because you know, in passing, there are certainly many times when you pass somebody in the hall, you're not even really aware of the fact that they work at the Cleveland Municipal Court because you don't have any inter interaction with them. So this is an opportunity, I hope you take advantage of it, to say hello to somebody that you may have seen but you didn't know was actually an employee of the court and to get to know them a little bit better because you never know when you may need that person. And it's always better to be able to put a face you know, with the name when you're talking to somebody and this is an opportunity to do that and find out what they do. So, you know, it's important that you do that. In addition to which, it's also Im important that we focus on uh, what we're doing here today. You know, if you went overseas and when you got there, you, know, you got stopped for a traffic citation or something more significant than a, tra a traffic citation, and you came to court, e even if it was in a country where you had taken that country's language in junior high school, high school, or even college, you might feel really uncomfortable in a courtroom setting where they're talking legalese for that country as to whether or not you knew exactly what was going on. So frequently, you know, we'll see people who come through the door who appear to know the language, that is English, but the fact that they ask for interpreter services or they want translation services is something that we shouldn't automatically say, ah, oh, he can speak English, he's just trying to use this as a crutch. No, these are people who are concerned that they are not going to get the full picture and that their due process rights might be impinged upon because of the fact that they don't have a full grasp of everything that's going on. What we're going to try to do today is to give you an overview of uh, how we are trying to make that better for everybody because every single person that comes to our court has a constitutional right, whether they're a citizen, whether they're a legal resident, whether they're here on a visa, whether they're here illegally to get due process when they have to come into the court of law. And it's our responsibility to make sure that that happens. I'm here to tell you that I am so proud of our uh, language access unit because it is, the, without question, the best one in the state of Ohio, and I would suggest to you that it is probably one of the best ones in the entire country, and I want you to give them a hand. <laughs> Lastly, I, I wanted to uh, specifically uh, point out uh, Catherine. Uh, Catherine is really kind of the driving force. She's like the heart and soul. She's the passion of that unit. And she's the person uh, who, more than anybody else, has uh, kind of kept me straight as to what needs to be happening in this area and, and how we need to help the people who are coming uh, to our court to fully understand uh, and to get the services that they need. And I want to specifically in front of the, the entire crowd, you know, say thank you, Catherine. I, I really am um, so glad that we hired you. Okay. <laughs> and lastly, I charge uh, those that will take over after I leave here to make sure that this unit continues to prosper because 
the number of people coming to our courthouse who don't speak English is not likely to diminish in the years to come. It is likely to grow exponentially. And it's not just the languages that are covered by the Supreme Court's um, initiative for certification that we need to be concerned about. There are lots of orphan languages out there that we need to be mindful of and mindful of the fact that we really need to make sure that the people who come through the door who speak one of those languages are directed in a meaningful way to somebody that can assist them and shepherd them through the system so they can get the, what they're really entitled to under the law. So thank you. Enjoy this afternoon. I think that you'll find it extremely interesting if you haven't had contact with uh, language access and language access services before today. I think that when you walk away, you're going to have a new appreciation for what that is and how it works and what your individual role is in making sure that the people who uh, we serve uh, walk away saying, I got justice at the Cleveland Municipal Court. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Adrian. And now we'll circle back and bring forward our president of the Cleveland City Council, Kevin Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, it's great to be here to, uh, to, to talk about a topic that means so much to all of us. And uh, I know that you don't need me to tell you this, but um, the work that you do is so tremendously important. And, um, and I just take a moment to say that is, you know, sometimes things become a job, but never forget how important what you do means to the city of Cleveland, the system of justice. And that's why it is so important that all of us who, who serve the public make sure that we're not serving just the English speaking only public, that we're, that we're serving everybody and that city hall is, and the, and the court is open to everybody. Um, I've been working, we've started down the course of instituting our own language access plan um, a couple of years ago and it was really uh, it was it was really challenging I was very surprised to find out you know how far we, we needed to go and um, what we weren't doing and it was really kind of an eye-opener when we started digging into it I want to thank the mayor and I want to thank Olivia and Alex for really um, taking this initiative and, and making it so that we could that we can move forward and since we've started it's really been like I say an eye-opening journey um, to understand the amount of non-English speaking people that use the services um, of, of City Hall. And you know how important it is that we make sure that, that City Hall is open and welcoming to every single citizen um, that, that enters our, our doors or receives a service from the City of Cleveland. And, um, and in doing this, I guess it was somewhat comforting to find out that um, we were not the first um, city or institution to, to struggle with this. And it was, it was great that we had people that could do the research and look to what other cities, what other courts, other institutions have done in terms of instituting a language access program. Um, I'm, I'm happy to report that just in the time that we've, we've started, we have, um, we have put our website in multiple languages. We have um, card services at every entrance. Um, our forms are all in uh, different languages. And most importantly, and the hardest thing that we found is that the training for all the different divisions has taken place in earnest. And we're really training the direct people at the director level, the commissioner level, and anybody who interfaces with the public the significance of, of language access. So it really has been a, a great journey. And I'm certainly uh, pleased to be, have been able to work with the court as you know, City Hall went down this, this journey as well. Uh, we had a situation just recently where somebody requested interpretive services and we weren't quite ramped up well enough to go. And, but fortunately, the Cleveland Municipal Court did have that um, infrastructure in place and uh, somebody came over and you know, volunteered and kind of, kind of walked us through. So we have not had, since we, went, since we started this process, we have not been able to fulfill a request for language access service. And the, the court's been a very helpful partner in doing that. So you know, as we move forward, we're not done yet. We certainly have a, a long way to go to make sure that, um, that everybody understands that, you know, we, that we will accommodate, we'll make sure that um, anybody who needs a service of the city of Cleveland will be accommodated. 
but um, we've, we've come a long way and making sure that City Hall, our services, you know, the court, the schools, everything, all public servants understand that what we do is open to everybody. City Hall is welcoming to all of our citizens. We want to just continue to push that message forward and let people know that, you know, we are one Cleveland regardless of the language you speak or the services that you need. So, again, let me conclude where I started by thanking you for what you do and um, thanking all of those that are committed to this very important goal of making sure that we are all open to everybody who needs our services. And um, keep doing the great work that you're doing. We are, We've done a lot together. We've come a long way, but we're not done. So thank you so much, and enjoy the uh, rest of the afternoon. Thank you, Kevin. So now, as you can see, we have uh, the administrative branch of government, the legislative branch of the government, and the judicial branch of the government all focusing in on providing access to justice and accessibility to our government and to make things run smoothly. Now to give you an overview of our language access plan and its purpose, I'll bring back up Catherine Arietta to begin the training on our language access plan. And actually, let's have Judge Adrian address the board one more time before I address it. Okay. Just uh, really quickly. I I, I was remiss in not mentioning uh, two things. First of all, how grateful we are to all of the assistance that we've received, uh, both from the legislative and executive branches in the persons of uh, City Council President and the Mayor, and uh, all the efforts that we've done. They have supported us, not just 100%, but 1,000% over a period of time um, when we've asked for things to help us get to where we are now. And I just want to publicly again say thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Council President. Okay. What's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just, I, there was a, I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, smoke key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires.